So, you know, we are constantly bombarded with some kind of agendas, big pharma, government officials, experts everywhere tell you this is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. But how do you know if they're not just trying to sell you something or they try to influence you somehow? How do you know that? I have a big problem with a lot of stuff when I hear trust the experts. <laughs> This is, this is the narrative over the last uh, three years. Trust the experts. Don't think for yourself, you know? You don't have PhD. <laughs> Leave thinking to the experts. That's, that's what we've been hearing. So let me show you examples of these experts. Hey, this is Mike Saigula from truefear.com and welcome to another video. So why should we question everything? This is the topic for today. Hmm. Why should you question everything? Should you listen to the experts? Which experts? <laughs> should you listen to me? Hmm. I say always question everything. Don't believe anything, but don't dismiss it either. Why? Why? Why I think this is really important, especially in current era. You know, it's kind of funny, if you talk to random person on the street, they will probably know more about things like football. <laughs> I don't know, maybe like what are the salaries of footballers, who won the World Cup, who are the top players, who are their wives, what cars they are driving. People know a lot about these types of topics. Or I don't know, anything about Kardashians or how many plastic surgeries they had or whatever. What's their net worth, products, these types of things, you know? A lot of people know a lot about these topics. But you can ask them about something like that all the futurists, technocrats, scientists tell us that we are the last generation of homo sapiens, that we're gonna be running with some kind of microchips in our heads in the future the years, that AI is gonna take over everything, that we're gonna run out of fish in the oceans in like 20, 30 years, which sounds insane. No one knows about it. You get that fluoride stare, you know? <laughs> People roll their eyes about these types of things. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be mean, you know, I like uh, sports myself, I like entertainment, I think these things are for people, but priorities, right? What is really important? You know, it's probably way more important to have a planet for, your, for the next generations to live on, so we don't destroy the, the resources and things like that, or to prevent transhumanism you know, so you don't have to be a little robot of some corporation. You know, these types of things should be a priority or some kind of digital currency that, you know, you're gonna have a power taken away from you by governments or, or banks or whatever. So there are some of the topics, I guess, that should be a bigger priority than other topics. This is what I'm trying to say here, but it's the other way around. Entertainment or, or football, whatever, these types of topics get a lot of attention and anything a little bit more important, no one cares about it. So this is what I'm talking about here. And uh, because of the way the society works and you know, the dumbing down and, and these things are by design in my view, it's partially at least. So I think that it's really important for people to question things. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So, you know, we are constantly bombarded with some kind of agendas, big pharma, government officials, experts everywhere tell you this is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. But how do you know if they're not just trying to sell you something or they try to influence you somehow? How do you know that? I have a big problem with that as someone who's been uh, serious into researching all sorts of topics for 
you know, I'm doing working online for 13 years almost now. So really like digging deep and always seeing the flaws in these narratives and issues. So this is, I have a big problem with a lot of stuff when I hear trust the experts. <laughs> this, is, this is the narrative over the last uh, three years, trust the experts. Don't think for yourself, you know, you don't have PhD. <laughs> leave thinking to the experts that's that's what we've been hearing so let me show you examples of these experts big pharma let's take pharmaceutical industry as an example here a patient cured is a customer lost big pharma this should be the slogan <laughs> the main slogan for every pharmaceutical company i think it's it's kind of really important to understand for people that pharmaceutical industry like any other industry is interested in making money making profit and there is no money in healthy people right so every medicine has side effects what's going to work for one person well might have a lot of issues for other person because everyone is different there is no one size fits all so people should always question and not take something if it's unnecessary but because of the way that the industry works everything is being pushed you know to sell as much as possible and everything has side effects you know side effects might not always be obvious that's the another thing and if you look at the history of some of the biggest corporations in pharmaceutical industry it's just really filled up with fraud everywhere. Let me show you a couple of examples. GlaxoSmithKline, one of the biggest pharma companies in the world, in 2012 pleaded guilty for promoting drugs for unapproved uses, kickbacks to physicians, and failure in reporting breaches in safety data, resulting in the biggest healthcare fraud in the US history and $3 billion fine, which is still the largest settlement by a pharmaceutical company. You know, companies like Pfizer paid over $10 billion in fines for safety-related offenses, healthcare offenses, competition-related offenses. Countless cases, countless, $10 billion. Let me give you another example. I don't know how many of you have heard about uh, thalidomide. Uh, that was a medication prescribed to pregnant women in the 1950s and 60s to alleviate morning sickness. However, it caused thousands of birth defects in children, including limp malformations, deafness, blindness. This led to a worldwide scandal as many children were born with severe disabilities and deformities. Approximately 10,000 babies were affected here. Vioxx. In 2004, Merck NCO withdrew its painkiller Vioxx from the market after studies showed that the drug increased the risk of heart attacks and strokes. However, it was later revealed that Merck had downplayed the risks of Vioxx and manipulated the data in their clinical trials to make the drug appear safer than it was. Hmm? FDA approved, right? FDA approved research conducted by researchers at Yale School of Medicine back in 2017 discovered that almost 33% of the FDA approved drugs between 2001 and 2010 had multiple issues with safety even after the medication had been passed on to the markets for consumers. 33% of FDA approved drugs had issues over this period. So here is your FDA approved. So, you know, trust the experts. <laughs> the experts that agree with our propaganda get paid by us. So that was just some examples of how the pharmaceutical industry works and if you want to do some research you can find hundreds of similar examples and science in general has a lot of issues as well the way that science is conducted let's say you know i'm not against scientific method why should i be 
but I'm against using science to push some products, to push some views. Scientific community is full of people with massive egos that don't like to approve new findings because you know their position is in jeopardy. There are many many issues there. You know just a very simple example is when you look at science or research of what is good to eat or what is healthy what is not because every few years these things change. They tell you that eating eggs is bad for you then you get different findings that say it's okay. Another funny thing that I have been hearing, especially in the last few years, that most experts agree, right? They agree that whatever the narrative is, it's because most experts agree, right? You know, you probably heard that. Once you get into details, it's not that most experts agree. They repeat what they've been told. <laughs> That's why they agree. The ones that don't agree, typically not gonna speak out because they are afraid of their reputation. Because if you're not gonna agree with the narrative, you're gonna get labeled pseudoscientist, anti-vax or whatever, and most people are afraid. So they're not gonna speak out. Just a couple of days ago, I was speaking with someone in my family who was talking to a doctor lately who is his friend and he said he's regretting taking the doo -doo because he's having a side effects now two years later and he said the doctor said yeah I shouldn't be saying that but I'm gonna tell you something in private da 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 you know how many times I, I heard these types of stories already you know that scientists or doctors they don't want to speak out because they are afraid what the backlash gonna be. So this is why most scientists agree because the ones that don't agree not gonna speak out because they're afraid of losing their funding or being labeled pseudo or whatever. That's why. And those that agree, they just repeat what they've been told. They were not taking part in trials, whatever. You know, we are hearing a lot about uh, how the data can be manipulated and all these types of things. So this is why most scientists agree. <laughs> so coming back to this whole theme of why we should question everything. I'm just giving you some, some examples in different fields here. But even if you look at any corporation, typically the corporation to sell you things, they cannot really reveal what's going on behind the scenes. Once you get into details, especially with large corporations, you know, there's always like a lot of controversy. For example, with clothing companies, they just use some sweatshops in Bangladesh or somewhere in which the rules there are very different, so they pollute the environment. People work in dif difficult conditions and things like that for a very small money. But you go to the store and uh, you have a girl smiling and being polite to you and, and cool branding and, and uh, models advertising products, right? But the reality, how these products are made, is a complete opposite to that. And this is almost with every industry, especially when there are large corporations involved. So, you know, but they cannot tell you that. They cannot show you what's going on behind the scenes because no one would buy anything from them. <laughs> That's the thing. So this is the problem that corporations to exist, they need to lie. They need to pretend. They need to hide everything that they don't want to show to the customers because no one's going to buy from them and then they don't have business. That's why it's so important to question things because really that's how the whole world really works here. You know, I mentioned the fishing industry because for me, like I've been researching this stuff years ago. My mind is blown when I hear that, you know, we live on a planet where there's like whatever 70% of water, oceans should be vast. And we are hearing that overfishing and the industrialized methods to catch fish just literally destroy the whole habitats. The, the whole ecosystem in a couple of decades, which is insane if you think about it. And you know, and 
you look at other industries and, <laughs> and you learn that almost everything works like that. A couple of months ago, I met my uncle for some dinner or whatever and haven't seen him for a while. And he told me that he watched Sea Spiracy, the documentary on Netflix, and they were shocked, he and his girlfriend, how the fish industry works. And I was like, hmm, really? This is shocking to you? You didn't know this stuff? And uh, it's great that more and more people understand these things, but the issue is that most people are still unaware of these things. And almost every industry works like that. You know, this is why I say question everything, because almost everywhere you look, <laughs> there's just lies and lies and lies and lies. And coming back to the trust the experts, you know how many people were saying in the 90s the best CEOs that the internet's not gonna take off. Yeah, the best experts were saying that. Or if you would actually speak to any economist or banker like 20 years ago and uh, tell them that, you know, there's gonna be a digital currency that someone's gonna create out of thin air. You're not gonna be even able to figure out identity of this person. It's just gonna grow on its own through use cases for participation of people and it's going to become as valid as dollar accepted by countries by card companies by banks bitcoin and cryptocurrencies if you would talk to the best experts whether it's like bankers economists before it happened that something like that just become accepted everyone would say every top expert would tell you this is not possible because no government would ever allow it no banking institutions no one would ever allow it because that's gonna create a threat to the monetary system and obviously you know money in this form to be accepted it has to have some kind of massive institutions behind so and what happened <laughs> We know what happened with crypto, with Bitcoin, things like that. So trust experts always. And you know, I don't have to tell you about media. It has filled up with propaganda, six corporations owning most of the media in the US, internet censorship, that most of the information flows through a handful of corporations and they censor everything that is not mainstream approved. So really like the world, that we interact with is just based on propaganda, lies, and whoever is more convincing and has more money, they are the loudest. It's not about what is real, what is right. It's about what is the, the strongest, who has the most money to push their ideas and agendas. And you know, you probably heard this saying, history is written by the victors. So another thing to think about that, you know, even like things in history, once you start looking into details, a lot of popular things are not really so obvious. Anyway, not gonna be taking a lot of your time here. I just wanna say question everything because really we're bombarded with agendas and propaganda constantly. And I think it's always sane to have this BS filter Whatever the new thing appears, whatever the new new lie comes up, new story, you know, just, just approach it. Just questioning if this makes sense or not. Finally, I wanted to add one more thing here because I'm hearing people saying, yeah, sometimes, you know, things happen like that, what you say, but this is rare. Mm, rare? <laughs> rare? Keep in mind that what we know about what came out like some kind of lies or whatever. This is only a small fraction of what probably is happening overall, because obviously no one is interested in revealing that. Let's say, I don't know, you cheated on your wife. Do you want her to find out about it? You know how many people cheat on their loved ones and no one ever finds out about it. So this is the, the idea here that what we know about is just a tiny fraction of what's really happening because you're never gonna probably find out. Great example is like how there's been declassified information um, from some of the intelligence agencies and 
you know, all the crazy shit they've been doing, but no one knew about it back then. Hmm? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a look at this other video I made similar, why everything is a lie. It's just a title, <laughs> like a movie title. Don't, doesn't mean everything is a lie. I'm explaining that in general, most things are illusion because people keep pointing the title. Something's wrong with the title. Thanks for watching. Support us on patreon.com forward slash truth theory. And if this video makes sense, if it resonates with you, please give it a like. Let me know in the comments what do you think about it. And share this video on social media. This always helps with the algorithm, but it creates more awareness. You know, it's always helpful when you guys share our content. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, follow me on Instagram. It's Mike Saigula on Instagram. And until next time.